Imo State has got a lot going on. Today, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has said that it has halted making public the outcome of the investigation by the committee on Imo North Senatorial District election. Five lawmakers that were earlier suspended were recalled. Imo politics is really interesting, and we are bringing it to the fore. I told you. Tonight, we're putting a <laughs> light, uh, beaming our such lights on Emo State. And I'm still being joined in the studio um, by Francis Chilakapo. First, we have Mr. Emmanuel Umoran. He's a legal practitioner. It's good to have you join us. Thank you. And of course, uh, Francis Chilaka from Coots Foundation and Emo Network Group has been with us. Uh, we've been having an interesting conversation. Thank you. Yes, but we'll, we'll start, gentlemen, with the legal angle of all of this. Five lawmakers suspended, now being recalled. What are the processes in, involved in, you know, saying you're suspended or you're fired? Okay, we changed our mind. We're bringing you back. <laughs> Educate us. Well, um, we have found ourselves in a country where we do not follow laws anymore. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the powers of INEC have been interpreted several times since 1999 till date. Mm. The, the power to suspend, call back, and issue are powers that I don't think INEC has. Okay. With all the amendments that have been done to the Act. A lot of people debated, actually. Yes, you see, um, it's, it's early in the day. These issues are going to be contested in the courts, and the courts are going to come with decisions. Okay. And it's those decisions that will crystallize the position of the law clearly, what powers INEC has. You see, the, uh, from the general principles of law, of, administra of uh, administrative law, uh, where the sovereign, the state, the executive, takes an action it is no more the, that has affected the citizen. It is no more the powers of the state to withdraw that. It is now for the court to determine, to come in, the arbiter mm. is normally is the court, to come in to determine and say, look, this is what has been done properly. This is what has. Because you see, people's rights have been affected. People have, been, have gotten benefits. People have gotten... Uh, the bad uh, end of the, of, of the sword. Mm. So if you now come in and say, oh, no, no, this is not what I wanted to do before. This is, what, this is a new thing. Mm. You're creating a problem. You're creating, giving power. There seems to be a lot of confusion. Yes. For example, during the, the, the just concluded elections, INEC suspended elections in some places, uh, and people came out to say, INEC does not have the power to do so. And INEC said, well, we did not suspend <coughs> the elections. We suspended the coalition. And the people still say, you don't have the powers to do that. So is the Electoral Act not clear enough as to what INEC is supposed to do and not do? You know, I think we're in a new season. The last election had some peculiar challenges. Hmm. The challenges are the fact that the military was brought in to play. In a lot, especially in the southeast and south-south hmm. areas of um, the country. Um, you had a, less of it in Lagos mm -hmm. because all eyes are in Leg on Lagos. You have less of it in Abuja. And then in the far north, you had some less because the trouble crisis that may erupt in some areas, you, you want to avoid them. Mm. But in the southeast and south-south, there was a lot of militarization. People had access. I don't know where the powers came from, but people had access to directing the military to do certain things for them, the police, the army. And this created, look at the case of River State. And the, in, even in the, the issue of the INEC official that was arrested and detained and told to deliver a certain result. Hmm. Where was the police? <laughs> But we did also see what happened. We had vi live videos of the police and the army having a face-off, where the police were saying, well, the army doesn't have a right to be at the coalition center. I mean, it was a it Yes, was it a was in River State. That was yes, in River, was State. River State. But it's a mess. The mess that you see where people are using the military. 
But you see, we must warn that this is the beginning of crisis. I remember in 2003, before the 2003 elections, I was in the office of an AIG, and um, the policeman was shot in Lagos here, Zone 2. And the man said, oh, come, how, how, what has happened? Killing policemen? I said, sir, you people are the cause. He said, well, how? I said, where a, a policeman stands by and a Nigerian citizen takes a gun and kills another Nigerian, and the policeman doesn't arrest that Nigerian that killed another Nigerian, a man will be emboldened to shoot a policeman next time. That is what is going to happen. When people have been emboldened, when people, these are the crises that created. So I can I ask you a question. <laughs> How independent is INEC? You see, INEC is independent to the extent to which. I think Nigerians. this is also a debatable issue because, you know, we talk about the fact that we have the ICPC, the EFCC, all these government agencies. Uh, that are supposed to be independent. That are supposed so to be how, independent. No, no, let's leave those ones. We know that they are not fully independent. We know that they're, they're not how, even how close. How do you know that they're how, not fully how independent? How independent is INEC? You see, you, we must take this thing in the context. The independence of every organization in the country should be dependent on the institution not on persons. The problem we have here is that when there is a president of Nigeria, every institution bows to the president. So uh, we'll get to that point because I'm going to ask him the next <laughs> question. But I want to talk about the judiciary quickly before we go back to Francis. The judiciary cannot actually say that you're also as, um, what's the word now? You're part of the mess. We've seen courts orders flying left, right, center, you know. It, it, at some point, people are confused. Again, let's go back to River States. We saw the case of um, the party, the APC, where a court, a certain court was saying, you shouldn't hold your primaries because you, it wasn't done within. Another court was saying, go ahead. So the judiciary cannot say that they are absolved of some of the blames. You are also in the middle of this problem. You see, let, let's... And yet we're pointing fingers at INEC. No, let's get something right. Uh, Lord Denning, in Learning the Law, in his book, Learning the Law, wrote something. Lord Denning is the iconoclastic judge in England mm -hmm. who wrote, who, who, who affected the law today as it is. Um, he said that if he sits in court in the morning and a brilliant lawyer comes with facts and argues in a way and convinces him, he will give judgment to that lawyer. Hmm. Even if the person is guilty. Oh, what do you mean guilty? Guilt is, <laughs> you must prove guilt. You understand? I need us to put things, be calm In about this. Yes. Uh -huh. That when he goes for tea and comes back, and that same lawyer comes with, with different facts and argues with the law, and he gives, argues another way, he will give him judgment. The reason is this. Facts and law must merge. Two different facts may, may, facts may be put out before a judge. And those facts and the law may make the judge arrive at a particular but decision. In a case where there are electoral laws, there are inter-party laws, yes. the rules and regulations, because every party has its constitution. constitution. Yes. And it is written in stone. Let's just say that. I'm wondering what other facts would make a judge give two different judgments. Judgment. Not, not one judge. I'm just saying. Two different judges. Two different judges. Now, let's give... With let's, the same... With, this, with the constitution of the party lying right in front of let's you. Let's put it this way. Uh, I am not a politician, but I need to put say it. We've had situations where they say party uh, executives come from Abuja. Mm -hmm. They go and... So the, the, a team, one part goes to this uh, area, another part goes to this area because of lucre, because of money or influence or whatever. Now, this part that comes, say, oh, we came from Abuja before a judge who wasn't there. And these are, we are the people that came. And we saw this and saw this and, and we, are, we have agreed on this. And then the judge looks at that and says, oh, okay. 
the judge would not know if there are five, ten people that the party sent because there's no constitution that tells you the number of persons that are good to go. Is it discretion of the executive or the chairman of the party to determine if he's going to send ten people, five people, three people? Now he said, okay, these are the people that came, the facts that are put before the court. And then this, look, look, it's, it would be easier if we were more altruistic in our, in, in our dealings. We'll come back to the courts. Let's go to you, Francis. <laughs> you, you, you're of the Emo Network Group, and we see that Emo is a very interesting place for <laughs> politicking, especially your uh, gov outgoing governor, who's also a pending senator. I mean, we see um, Ikedio Hakim saying, we draw the cases, you know. <clears throat> Let, let's just live and let leave. You know, and we see the, 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 the uh, House of Assembly saying, okay, we, I think we made a mistake. Let's, let's just have some peace, come back. What is going on in Imo State? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm just wondering, from, from the outside looking in, it seems really you know, ridiculous, but maybe you could share that. No, the, the thing going on in Imo State is that the Imo people have spoken. Uh, the Imo people have gone through a lot in the last eight years. Have they? Yes, they have. In the hands of Rochas Okorocha, yes, he has. Um, he turned himself into a feudal lord, and um, uh, and to come to think of imposing his own son-in-law on the people, with what the people have gone through, people have coming from hell. What makes him different from other people who bring people or impose? Because that, he let me tell you, he, he he are the Republican in nature. Okay. Well, well, that's that's how we are. You you, it's it's it, the Ibos are not like. The, the Southwest, where if the, the Oba of Lagos says something, everybody falls in line. It doesn't happen like that in, in, in the Southeast. Igwe Nwerezi, that's what we say. The Igbos have no king. Hmm. That is how we have lived on, yes. That's debatable. No, but it's the truth. <laughs> You don't, you, see, this is one thing with the evil man. You don't feed me, evil, I don't feed the, you. The evil, the now, evil man, when it comes to politics, you mean? Now, the thing is, when it comes to politics, first and foremost, we need to understand where we're coming from. Just like any other state in Nigeria, parties have their like, constitution, and then there's this zoning formula. Say, so, okay, Olu zone, eight years. After eight years, it comes to Wede zone. After Wede zone, it goes to Okibwe zone. And do they zone. stick to it? Now, it, they've been trying to stick to it. But Rochas wanted to mess that up. And not only that, the people were fed up with his governance. And his son-in-law, which I also incidentally played a prominent role in his own in, in, in Rochas administration. Now, if you were in that same government that people are crying, that you were giving them scorpion instead of bread, and you now think you can come in and continue from where he stopped. I mean, we're not see, like I keep saying. Nigeria will get better when every one of us go back to our states and begin to own our states. Let us leave the federal alone. I respect um, His Excellency, Hedy Hakim. He's a, he's, he, said, he said the mind of everybody. People going to court have no, no need to go to court. Why? I mean, there are people who might not necessarily be in agreement with the... Yes, but, but he's, he was also a candidate. Waiting. He was also a candidate. I know. And most of these people who have gone to court, they didn't even come, no, they didn't come third position in the elections. So if you're, if you're coming back 28th position and you're going to court, I don't understand what you're trying to prove. But I, I don't really understand. Just quickly, because okay. I think we're running yeah. out of time, and the guys would, are saying we have you, to go. Would you uh, agree that um, sometimes uh, the persons who may be saying, do, don't do this, may be out of negotiations? No, no, no. I, Hagim didn't because, do any negotiations. No, 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 sir. No, don't go there. But you were not there. I, no, I know him personally. He didn't oh, enter into any... But we don't know if you know him. No, personally. the truth of the matter is that the Imo, the Imo people, Imo lights, as we call them, the Imo, we have spoken about it. But it mind. is politics. There will be negotiations. Yes, close yes but, sure. but the, thing, the point, there, no, the there point, will be, no, there the will be is, some compromises here and there for the peace in, in, in the interest of the, the people. Point is, the point is that the popular candidates, the acceptable candidates who participated in the Imo election are saying, let us come together. Our state has been damaged. Let us come together and build our state up. And that is the ideal thing to do right now. But can I say something? We I, need to I go. Was, oh, okay. Quickly, quickly. Okay, I was in Oweri some couple of months ago, and some people were saying certain things, that there are some developments in Oweri that are surprising. There are openings. Oweri has opened up. 
there was a little bridge that Rochester built. They said it spent a lot of money building it. But that fa the fact of that bridge has opened up a way beyond expectation. But it's his job. It's <laughs> not a political thing. No, but the, 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 the problem we have in this country, there, there, was, there was a governor who celebrated opening of Mr. Biggs. But why no, is that? So the problem we have in this country <laughs> is that when <laughs> government do what they're supposed to do, we carry placards to hail them. It is our right. Yes. We shouldn't praise any governor for doing the right thing. But when a government, a governor celebrates opening of Mr. Biggs, that I brought Mr. Biggs to weary, and nobody said anything, saw anything wrong in that. If somebody builds a bridge that opens up the what town, is you are from Akwa Ibom, isn't it, sir? Yes. I wish you would, you know. I said I'd come to. I wish we can bring you to so come so and when stay. I was young boy. All right, we need to go, are gentlemen. Um, it's 2019. We think differently now. <laughs> Thank you very much, um, Mr. Emmanuel Umoren. He is a legal practitioner. Thank you very much for speaking Thank with you. us. It's been an interesting one. Francis Chilaka, Kuz Foundation and Emo Network Group. <laughs> it, it has been an interesting one. We need to take a short break and bring you our political packages. And right after that, I'll be giving you my take. Stay with us. of the Senate presidency, youth leaders in the All Progressives Congress are questioning the adoption of Senator Ahmed Lawan and Femi Gbajabiamila as preferred candidates for the leadership of the National Assembly. The group under the aegis of Forum of States and Zono APC youth leaders criticized the party for making pronouncement of the National Assembly leadership positions to the exclusion of other positions and zones. They called for the convening of the party's National Executive Committee meeting and the zoning of all positions to accommodate the six geopolitical zones of the country. Order for us to reconcile all issues and also review our last election that we did. This, I think, is going to move the party forward. Yeah, some, some youths are demanding for 45%, but I think it is not enough. With what is happening in Nigeria today, we have to engage about 60 to 65% of youth of course, of course. into the leadership position so that we avert the future crisis in this country. The major demand we have here is what concerns our constituency as youth, that means youth inclusion in able decision making. So, and to call for the president, knowing fully that the president has so much love for the Nigerian youth, and he understands how they have gone far day and night to contribute towards the winner of the 2019 election moving to the next level. Secretary General of Interpol, Judging Stock, has commended the zeal and concerted efforts of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, in reading Nigeria of all forms of economic crime. Mr. Stock, who made the remarks during a visit to the EFCC headquarters, Jabi Abuja, on Tuesday as part of an official visit to the agency, was received by the EFCC acting chairman, Ibrahim Magun. According to Stock, the fight against corruption will help in the fight against terrorism, as the main source of terrorism financing comes from corruption. The WAPIS program will help police on the ground across the region and the global police community to have access to the vital data they need and when they need it. WAPIS brings all the West African countries together so as to collect data on crime and criminalities. When that data is collected, it is made accessible to all law enforcement. It's time for my take. Now, they say that the people are deserving of the leaders that they have. In other words, our leaders mirror our society. Now, some people would say, no, that's not true. We have funny people leading us. No, they don't, those people don't look like me. They don't act like me, but they're from our homes, our communities. They're from our neighboring villages. They're from families. They didn't drop from the moon. So this is what I always say. If you want a, a leader that is great, then you start from that child, from that ward, Create the kind of people that you want to run society tomorrow. It starts from today. And of course, we're all fighting for power. We see tussles everywhere, you know, uh, political assassinations, all kinds of things. What is power if it does not add value and change lives? What kind of power are you looking for?
The next time you're struggling or tussling for any power, ask yourself, is it worth it? Am I worth it? Am I worth leading these people? It's been Plus Politics, and I'm Mariana Cohn. See you soon.